Today I want to talk about the lung. Now this is a right lung and you can see two different colors here. More of a pink and then this discoloration here. The discoloration isn't exactly normal, but overall these are very healthy looking lungs. Now as I pull it out, you see what almost looks like a cut has been made, but that's not a cut. That's showing the different lobes of the lung. And in fact, I can pull the entire thing out and we can see that your lungs are absolutely enormous. Today I want to talk about your thyroid gland. So the thyroid sits just below your Adam's apple or thyroid cartilage and just above your trachea or your windpipe. So this purple butterfly looking gland helps regulate your metabolism as well as lower how much calcium is inside of your bloodstream. So what I have here is the skin off one of my cadaver's backs. Now what you can see are like freckles and moles and age spots, but what I want to look at is this cross section of the skin because what I'm touching here is called the epidermis, but most of what you're seeing is the dermis. Now the epidermis is what sheds and the dermis isn't. So let's say I drew on this skin with like a pen. Well the reason why that would disappear is because the epidermis flakes. But if I did a tattoo gun, the ink would push down into the dermis and would be more permanent. Today I want to show you one of my favorite skeletal muscles called the psoas major and the reason why it's one of my favorites is because of how deep it is. So watch this. I got to remove the chest plate and the core muscles and then I see this fat pad called the greater omentum. I pull that over and then I see the small intestines. I move those things out of the way and we see this yellow tissue here called the peritoneum. I have to then slide that and there it is. That is one of my favorite muscles called the psoas major. And you see that white line on it? That's called the psoas minor. They are just crazy deep inside of the body. What you're looking at here is a real human skull. Now, as I get closer to it, you're gonna immediately notice that it looks much different than any plastic skull you've probably seen before in your life. But what I wanna focus on is this thing. This is called the foramen magnum. It literally means big hole. And this is where the end of the brainstem, the medulla oblongata, and the, and the spinal cord exit the cranium, and then they go down the back. But there's just a gigantic hole at the base of your occipital bone. So I wanna talk about seizures. You see, I'm holding the right hemisphere of a real human brain. Now, in a seizure, what can happen is the neurons, the cells of the brain, can start firing when they're not supposed to, and it can even, in some cases, spread and recruit other neurons, so it spreads over the surface of the brain. Depending on which area of the brain is seizing up, you get different symptoms. Sometimes, the whole brain is involved, and you get this just complete shutdown of the body. Other times, it's more localized, and you get a very specific set of symptoms depending on the, where the seizure occurred. Let's talk about this tiny little gland here called the pineal gland. Now this thing, which is situated just above the cerebellum and the brainstem, and just below your corpus callosum, is often referred to as the third eye. Now this, the only thing that we know it secretes for sure is melatonin, which is a hormone that causes you to get sleepy. But some people speculate that it might secrete DMT or dimethyltryptamine. But that's just speculation at this point. The only thing we know for sure is it secretes melatonin to cause you to get sleepy in an absence of light. Let's talk about a few of the structures that your body can survive without. You can live with as little as one lung. So let's say we took out this left lung, the body could survive with just this right lung. The body can also survive without this. This is called the spleen. The job of the spleen is to break down red blood cells and also act kind of like a giant lymph node, but your body can survive without it. The next thing is gonna be this. This is called your appendix. And the appendix definitely helps with your immune system and it likely stores probiotics or good bacteria, but it's not 100% necessary. And another thing you can live without is called the gallbladder. And in fact, this particular cadaver is missing it, which goes to show that he had his gallbladder removed at some point in his life. The testicle originates all the way up near the kidney, which is even higher than I'm able to get it here. And then starting around week eight, as you're developing inside of mom, the testicle begins its descent and travels through a canal deep to this ligament here called the inguinal canal, and it will then drop into the scrotal sac. If that doesn't occur, we call that cryptorchidism, which means essentially hidden testicle, and the testis could be located or trapped anywhere along that pathway. 
I want to show you some of the tools that we use here in the lab to dissect the cadavers. And some of them might surprise you, such as scissors and tweezers, except we don't typically use them the way that you would think we would. Uh, for instance, in this clip, you can see Kelsey using the blunt end of the tweezers to help separate the fatty tissue from the muscle tissue. And scissors can even be used to help separate and create little pockets. But tools that you probably would expect, such as the scalpel and the hemostat, this is used to clamp down and then pull on the tissue so you can use the scalpel. We use these quite frequently. But then, for bigger jobs, we use typical saws. But this is used in the way you probably would think to help remove things like limbs. But if we have a really big job, that's when we're going to use our industrial size bandsaw. And this is used to make very precise, clean cuts like this one here that allows you to see a ton of anatomy all at once. 